Greetings adventurers, my name is Kramer and today I would like to share with you just a little bit about uh, what I've been going through, what I've uh, experienced for the last couple of days and I'd like to start off the video by making the statement that there are people that live like I have been living for the past week like all of the time. So I'm aware that the problem that I've encountered has is very first world and I'm barely even I'm barely even suffering. But um, so about a week ago, my oil burner gave out. So I have been without internal heating in my house for the past couple of days. You can't tell because today it's 60 degrees, but only this morning, this entire area was pretty much covered in snow because it has been very, very cold pretty much except for today. Um, and that has meant that I have relied on space heaters and I have relied on my fireplace, which I'm very lucky to have for uh, warmth. And it's given me uh, kind of a silver lining happy excuse to uh, wear my very warm Berg Schneider clothing and also to sort of live like a little bit like they would have in the dark ages, right? Like I still have electricity, I still have hot running water, so I'm not like full dark ages, but going without heat has provided uh, some interesting opportunities for me to prove to myself that um, the adventuring lifestyle uh, has actually given me some skills that I need in order to provide for myself here in the real world. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a hand truck and I'm gonna go chop some wood. So when I go camping or something like that, I'm very used to uh, relying on the fire for my cooking and for the heat, especially when I go in the winter. Um, but there's always that sort of very safe idea that when you are home, that is the place where uh, nothing is really gonna get to you or if you're in your tavern or whatever. But this experience, this slight hardship of not having any heat in my house for the past couple of days has really provided a little bit of perspective and then taking that and just sort of running with it. And I'm wearing all of my medieval clothes, I'm wearing my medieval boots. They're completely uh, soaked through at this point because they need to be rewaterproofed. Um, but it really getting into that mindset of like, this is what has to happen there's not a way around it you, you can't complain to anyone you can't go to anyone and so it's kind of nice uh in some way to be forced into a position where uh i have to kind of you know put up or shut up it's a bit harder to pull i mean it's not super heavy but without the traction on my shoes that's a little bit harder um in addition to being a uh just a sort of way to prove to myself that i'm actually learning something and not just playing pretend this is actually a situation where there are people depending on me um, in order to provide uh, the heating source here. And it, it, it's a psychological thing, I don't know, where it's just different than you're choosing to be out camping where like, this is it, this is your house, nothing's supposed to happen to that. I'm gonna go ahead and split these logs because they're gonna burn better, I think. Um, otherwise they're too dense and the bark burns and the inside just turns to charcoal really quickly. And this is a lesson from the medieval period in if you're not prepared for, for stuff to go wrong, if you're not prepared for the thing that you know is gonna happen, which is winter, um, you're, if you're not adequately equipped to deal with that, you're just done. Um, so lesson learned for that of not having pre-cut, pre-seasoned wood for the winter, because I was just banking on modern appliances providing for me. In the back of my head, I'm always like, oh, well, I, th th those aren't always gonna be there. And then all of a sudden they're not there and I'm like surprised by it. But um, yeah, gonna go ahead and split these up. This is a lot easier than yesterday. Yesterday, it was super, super windy and much, much colder. But the bugs are out. Oh, the grass is greener on the other side. When it's 30 degrees, I'm here I am sitting in my house wishing that we could have the summer so I didn't have to deal with the cold. And then the second it gets slightly warmer and the bugs come out, all of a sudden I wish it was 30 degrees again. This is not the right type of axe for this, but I'm working with what I got. I'm getting to use my own kit for real.
So I've made improvements based on what I was doing yesterday and the problems I was encountering. Um, really big blister on my, on my hands, so now I've got my glove, which I made, very happy to have that. And just, I'm using these very thin gambeson sleeves to keep my actual clothing clean because it's far easier to clean the sleeves than it is to clean the clothing. The reason I'm occasionally bringing the ax forward and hitting it on the side of the stump here is because this doesn't have a wedge in it because it's a tomahawk. Uh, so occasionally the head is starting to rattle loose a little bit. I think it's because of the season. Not as bad as my other one was, uh, which I talked about in a previous video, but um, this one has that sort of similar issue, which I think is to be expected. But it's amazing how quickly you just adapt and, and move on and come up with new systems to just make a very simple task, which could, which could easily be very annoying, um, enjoyable, and uh, go by much quicker. And so this very much highlights how important community is um, when we're talking about any sort of uh, survival situation. I'm trying not to be, oh, I'm suffering, you know, about it. But um, like this axe, I don't have the skills to fix this axe if it gets a huge chip right in the blade. And when I'm done chopping all the wood, I don't want to have to go back inside and cook for myself. I'm already going to be hungry by the time I go in. Um, if my clothing gets damaged, that's going to need to be repaired. Someone has to do that, whether it's me or someone else. So you really need all of these people with hyper-specialized skills coming together. And that's exactly what a town is. And I may be stating exactly the obvious. I'm just amusing to myself as I chop wood, which is fun. I am firmly of the opinion that a short camp axe should be in every adventurer's kit and carried somehow. And it doesn't necessarily have to be used as a weapon too, but I could never do what I'm doing right now. Uh, really actually processing this firewood, not just like cutting them into logs. Um, I couldn't do this with a sax knife or something like that. You really need an axe. I'm sure most people already know that. thing about using uh, medieval boots is if a log falls on my foot there's nothing protecting it there's no steel toe there's nothing so I gotta be really careful I could be doing other things um, I actually have other things I, that I need to be doing lots of administrative stuff electronic paperwork I need to be filling out stuff like that got videos that I need to edit um, food that I need to make stuff like that like I easily could have just gone to the store and bought firewood or I could have ordered some of the cords of wood to be shipped in and then just had that. Um, I'm choosing potentially quite dumbly to try to do it all myself and just uh, see where that takes me and already um, my aim is getting a lot better with this so I'm improving some skills. This really is too short but I'm making it work and these logs are wet they're not like fully seasoned so they're dense. So something that I have been trying to do is extrapolate my experience uh, here into what it must be like to live actually in the medieval period because they relied on fires uh, for their heating too in, in sort of peasantry style homes. They would have had uh, maybe a hearth, something like that. And every other room would have been cold. Heat rises, so they had low ceilings. We have standard height ceilings. So it's very difficult to heat a room. Might even be more difficult to heat a room uh, today it might take more energy than it would in a house of the time period because they had lower uh, roofs, lower doorways, not as many windows, better heat retention. Um, but what I found is if I, if I treated um, my two space heaters as if they were fireplaces inside rooms, um, you want to stay as close to them as possible, which really limits uh, what it is that you're able to do. Like even if you have a lot of space, um, say your, your work desk, your computer, something like that is very far away from the space heater. I don't want to sit at the work desk. I want to be near the space heater. So that has led to me trying to find, uh, new tasks and new projects to do that allow me to stay close to the heat source. Cooking is always very warm. So cooking anachronism has been still a lot of fun. But so when I'm inside, it's, it's really a lot of sitting around, sitting around in my cloaks and my blankets. Um, repairs would be a good thing to do. Playing some sort of board game. I play a lot of chess, that, that's a good thing to do. Um, or 
if you know how, uh, reading and writing. And aside from that, it's either move in order to stay warm. I, I work out in order to stay warm now. Even though it doesn't matter how late it is at night. I'm cold. I'm going to go work out because it'll bring my body temperature up a little bit. Um, and then you go to bed early because the bed is warm. Yeah, really what it is is a way of me <laughs> uh, rationalizing my own situation uh, and making it seem cooler to myself as if I'm uh, connecting somehow with the past when there, there are people that do this all the time. But life should be an adventure, I think. And because this is this is novel for me, right? Like I'm I'm very lucky to live in a house that I, I generally don't have to worry about stuff like this. Um, but because this is a new experience, I'm trying to make the most of it and learn what I can from it and appreciate what people still go through and what people have gone through in the past. Getting enough logs to uh, feed the fireplace for just a full day. I mean, like I was seriously unprepared for this. That's my fault. Um, but getting a lo enough logs to um, actually feed the fire to a meaningful degree because it needs to heat up an entire space. I don't want to just have to sit near the fire. I want the house to be warm. It takes a lot of time. It's going back and forth, getting enough logs, then splitting the logs, then bringing the logs up to the house uh, and then going to get more. It can easily take a lot of time. So I can only imagine what it must have been like or what it is still like for some people, I suppose. Um, where not only do you have to have all of that wood, but you also have to be hunting your own food. You have to be collecting water. You have to be cooking. You have to be uh, repairing things around your farmstead or whatever it happens to be. There's a, there's a lot of work. There's a lot of infrastructure that needs to be there in order to really be uh, sufficient because the, the sort of hyper romanticized idea I have of a ranger, right? Where you are self-sufficient, you live all by yourself in the woods. It's not a comfortable style of living. Um, you don't always need to be comfortable. Um, I'm learning what I can from being uncomfortable at the moment. Putting myself, <laughs> I'm arduously putting myself into uh, less comfort just so that I can learn. But in order to really survive, in order to be really comfortable, um, specifically in the period which interests me, which is the medieval period, you really need community. You need friends, you need family, you need the people in your church. Um, in order to help you out because there's no way you could get everything done that you needed to get done by yourself, especially not in winter. So something that I can maybe encourage you to do to bring this back around to the channel, uh, maybe do a little experiment if you're so inclined and if you have the means. Um, might save you a little bit on bills actually, is if you just pick something uh, that you take for granted in your day-to-day -day life and see if you can do without it for a week. It could be an appliance, it can be a service, and there's always the safety net of being able to go back um, should you need to, which is what's nice about living in the modern day is that we have that sort of safety net uh, to experiment in. But it might be a good opportunity to see what gaps there are maybe in your skill set that you would like to practice or fill in. And it might give a, a greater insight and appreciation for the uh, time period, the fantasy genre, the medieval uh, time period that we like to uh, study. Every opportunity is a learning opportunity. Every opportunity is an adventuring opportunity. So that's gonna do it for today's video. A little slower, a little more uh, philosophical maybe, but um, I will see you next week. And in the meantime, I would like to wish you good luck on your adventures. Now I gotta get back to work.